Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us live or watching the replay of episode 17 of Social Chats with Andrea Wing, who is the manager of film creative for Lululemon Athletica. Um, very exciting. We are hosting this show live, which means that you can get involved with our guests. If you have questions, you can type them in the comment field below and we will see them pop up on your screen so you can um, pretty much talk with Andrea live. If you're watching the replay, feel free to type in your questions or comments in the comment field and we will answer them in a timely manner. A quick note about social chat. Social chat is a um, weekly live show that we've put together to help connect small businesses with people that are doing a really good job in their, their industry. Um, what they do works well with social media and our angle, I guess, is to keep you educated and most of all, inspired. So our guest today, <clears throat> I will read her bio because it's a pretty like beefy one and, and impressive. So Andrea Wing is the director and cinematographer. Uh, she lives in Vancouver. Her directing approach has led her to work with international brands, including Lululemon, uh, producing global commercial content. Andrea also continues to create work outside of the commercial space, often telling stories to celebrate our natural environment. She, her work has brought her to um, the D Democratic Republic of Congo, Kenya, Australia, Austria, and all over the US and Canada. Her website is andreawing.com. I will welcome Andrea with my favorite crowd noises. <laughs> Here we go. And welcome, Andrea. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for the applause. <laughs> <laughs> we need the cheering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, um, social chats, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. It's a sunny day here in Vancouver. It's noon. Feeling pretty good. Excellent. And I'm Taking a break. I'm at Lululemon today working. Um, so just taking a break to chat with all of you about what I do. Excellent. Uh, Thank yeah. you. Thank you for joining us. No um, we will start. This is a chat, so I'll ask you questions. You answer. If there's something else you think is valuable, feel free to step in with, with um, whatever. But our first question was a little bit more about what you do with your work with different brands, including Lululemon, which is just a brand everyone really knows, especially in, in Vancouver and BC, but um, what you do and what's the creative process behind it? Um, maybe the steps, what we don't see or what goes through before you even start shooting. Um, what, what are the, and then, and then once you start shooting, so maybe you can talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, seven questions in that one question, but <laughs> I start with the, uh, the, um, beginning. <laughs> the beginning. So in a nutshell, what I do is I manage the creative team, the film creative at Lululemon. So that means overseeing um, what we put out, um, what we put out um, from a community, like, I guess, a content perspective. Uh, and so here we have three filmmakers, three editors, um, and a whole slew of uh, other creatives, so art directors, designers, um, et cetera, working together to build content for our brand. So that could be anything from like a 15 second Instagram video to a 30 minute documentary. So we do everything in between, everything, those, those two spectrum, spectrums and everything in between. And so, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I do here, and then I do a little bit of freelance work outside of Lululemon um, as well for other brands. So I just finished a shoot with Audi last week, and um, which was really fun. And yeah, so I, I think I've touched a lot of different areas of the film and video world, and from and I think what I've realized, you know, I've worked on big Hollywood sets what I've realized is that I actually like being in the physical work and holding a camera and having uh, control over the editing. So uh, I've almost come full circle back to that place again where um, I'm a bit more hands-on and removed from the process. So um, that's where we are now. <laughs> Excellent. 
Um, if you, if there was something you would say for people who are starting with video, like what are the different steps or things they could do to get prepared before they even start shooting anything? We talk sometimes about storyboards. What, what other things could they do to get um, prepared and make the best out of it? Yeah, I think uh, pre-production is so important. Um, it's easy to get excited and just pick up a camera and start shooting, but then you're going to pay for that when it comes to trying to piece together, or you're going to pay for that in what we call post-production, meaning it's going to be really hard to piece together something coherent. So, yeah, going into this uh, storyboard is a really, really great idea. Uh, I wouldn't even hit uh, record on the camera unless you have one of those because that will definitely keep you on track and on budget, especially if you're hiring external people to help you with it. Um, that will definitely help um, the team out. So um, storyboard, and then if you are, like I guess there are probably a lot of people out there that are doing this themselves and not necessarily, won't necessarily have this, the um, resources to hire people. So, um, you know, if people are shooting, like if people are potentially shooting on their iPhones, you really want to think about what your output is going to be. So if it is going to say Instagram, then you know you want to be shooting horizontally versus vertically, or vertically versus horizontally, excuse me. Um, just because that is going to show up a little bit better. You're going to maximize um, your screen space. Um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, so um, having a plan or having a pre-production plan or a short storyboard is quite easy. Um, to do, you really just need to break out like, what are you going to do in your intro? Like, what is your keep your videos super simple? I would say, especially if you're trying to relay information, um, like instead of cr trying to cram too much into one video, think about separating it out and maybe creating an ep episodic series. Maybe it's like a how to do X, you know, like how to videos go a really long way, especially. Um, on YouTube, they get a lot of um, traction and viewership, and we have noticed a lot of that through Lemon that are how to videos, like whether it's how to do a yoga pose or how to tie a scarf or something like that. They, they do really, really well and they have a lot of longevity. So um, think about what your users and your clients or fans or whatever you want to call them, what they're actually, what problem they want solved, and solve that problem for them. Make it easy, make it digestible, make it simple. Maybe even like put a time limit on it, like I'm only gonna make it a minute or I'm only gonna make it a minute and a half. Like people don't have a huge attention span. So get to the point and keep it simple. Huh. We like keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, those are great tips. So get prepared in advance so you don't pay for it after. I think it's it's the same a bit when we're taking photos, we, found, we t tell our our clients, like you have an $800 camera in hand at all time, use it, but take the extra 30 seconds it takes to really frame your photo and work on the lighting and stuff before you actually take the photo because then you don't have to go use filters and a bunch of photo editing sites. You can mm -hmm. most likely use the thing. So I guess it goes well with video as well. Think about the what you're gonna talk about. I like the idea of breaking it into series and the how to as well as um, it's a really good one. So yeah. all great content. Moving on, if you uh, most of most of the people watching this show will probably be shooting um, either themselves holding their camera or using a tripod or having someone helping them, but most probably with with an iPhone. So is there anything you'd recommend for equipment that um, is accessible for for the average per person, but would, that may, really makes a difference? Yeah, you know, um, you, you've probably all watched videos with terrible sound, and you tune out. I find I tune out if the sound is not good. You can buy really uh, inexpensive audio um, gear that allows you to pick up great sound, and that could be independent of your camera as well. Um, if you do have a camera, consider investing in a really small shotgun microphone. Um, you know, you could pick one up for $200. Um, 
and I can provide some links after if you want. But um, yeah, I, I would just say like video, like having a nice image is great, but a uh, great sound will go, will just really enhance what you're offering to the world. Um, and then in terms of like camera gear, I think when you're starting up, I think it, and if your content is good, an iPhone is totally fine. Like I don't mind watching iPhone footage if it's like shot pretty well, and if, and the um, the internals of the iPhone or the, the more advanced uh, smartphones, the quality is great. So don't feel like you need to go drop thousand dollars buying a camera and audio gear when you if you don't need it right away. Um, I think just like making sure that you're in a, a quiet space, it's a controlled environment, um, the lighting's decent, you know, like all the all those sort of basics that we probably all know all about. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, I would I would just that would be like I would underline that 17 times, so like make sure your audio is good. Hmm. And do you have any brand you would recommend? We can put the link um, in the comment field. Any brands of microphone or? Yeah, so you can get a, a great microphone. They're called Zooms, um, a Zoom H4N or an H2N. Those are amazing prosumer um, little mics that you could bring along to an interview. Like say you just wanted the audio and you didn't want the video. You bring that along, you put it on the desk, you hit record. It records to a little SD card and it's like very simple and you will get top notch sound quality. Um, okay. so if I was uh, if I was doing a video, can I do I hook it up to my phone or is it separate or? Um, it would be separate. So if you wanted to pair audio and video, oftentimes you ever seen in movies where they have the clapper and eh, they'll, like, they'll do a clap. You know that. You know that <laughs> yeah, thing? Yeah. Okay, it's called the clapper. They use a clapper to sync video and audio together. So the camera starts recording, and like we often do this, and we'll just we'll clap once while the sound is recording, and then in post production, you know how like you can see visually where the clap happens, and then you line up your audio to that same spot. This is getting advanced, but um, anyway. So then you have then you're pairing your video and audio, and I. You know, this is obviously only happening if you are actually using like iMovie or a more advanced um, editing editing software. But um, if like it's sort of like, is there something that captures everything fantastically? Like, yeah, you could probably set yourselves up with a. Uh, you could probably get a little mic for your iPhone. I don't use them, so I don't know. I wouldn't know what model, but I'm sure that. It, that accessory is out there. Otherwise, um, if you're say you're working with like a little DSLR camera, get an onboard mic, and that will pair. Like if you plug it in through the mini jack, like that will pick up sound, and you won't need to do any syncing. So you'll have your video and audio all together. Dump it onto a timeline, and you can edit that or just output the raw file. Um, so I guess it's it's hard to know with without. Um, Knowing what sort of uh, equipment people have, but I would say if you are on the iPhone, look into just getting like a little um, a patchable accessory or audio accessory for your iPhone or your, or your phone. Mm -hmm. We use them, you know, those little micro clip. Heather has one. I'll ask her, um, Heather, if you're backing us up here on the show, um, to put in the comment field like a link of what you use to um, to shoot, and it's it's basically something you connect and then you have it. Um, you have it on your shirt, and it's just an extra step. But I've heard that before, actually, that sound was almost more important or for sure as important to um, to video and the quality of video. And it's funny because a lot of time in social media, people don't listen to the sound because they're watching the video while they're supposed to be at work or on the bus or something. And But when you listen to it, you want to make sure to have good sound. And, and then uh, I guess... With social media, we make sure to always back it up with captions, which in Facebook, it's really easy. Facebook actually creates the captions for you um, when you edit your video. So, But let's back it up with good sound. If ever people listen to it, then you'll be all set. So. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Great. I think, I think 
Love I think that. we always like think about stepping back a little bit was that every day there's so much content out there in the world and people are bombarded all the time. So what can you do that if you are going to interrupt somebody in their day with your content, make your content valuable. Like chances are that somebody else has made the same content as you. So how are you going, like do some research before you shoot anything. What's already out there? Can you repurpose somebody else's content without having to like spend your own money? Ask that person, reach out, say like, I really loved your podcast. Can I use it uh, for my business or whatever? Um, create partnerships with people out there. Um, but if you are going to create your own, um, I, we always think about like, okay, we're interrupting somebody's day. How are we providing value through this piece of content? Are we teaching something? Are we like enrolling them in something? Um, I think that's just an important question to start off with, um, knowing that people have don't have a lot of time in their lives to um, consume content. Hmm. This is super interesting. I really like the the fact that we are interrupting them, and it's true. Often um, with video, well, with social media, it comes to people' personal news feed where they are looking at posts from their cousins and their grandma and their friends, and all of a sudden, if you're in business, there you are. So you have to make sure that if you're gonna step into their day that it's with something um something that brings value to them and not a selling proposition i found this uh, exactly. good thing. i also like your point about doing your research and um and using other people's content because a lot of time people have really great blog posts and i i think it's nice to take like the basics of a blog post ask the person if it's okay to use and then repurpose it and give them credit for the the basic text and so that's good points, good points. Loving, <laughs> loving the answers there, lady. <laughs> okay, so uh, now you are talking, getting a mini bit more advanced. So for most of our viewers, this is gonna be kind of a, a step above like what we normally do, but there are some photo uh, video editing softwares that are available. Some are free and some you have to pay either a yearly fee or you just buy it once. Mm -hmm. um, we use iMovie and Camtasia, um, but I know there's others out there and I get that asked a lot by um, my son and his friends, they're teenagers and they do videos all the time and they want, they're want they getting to the point where they want to edit the video and they have to make one purchase about a, a film editing software. So do you have any recommendations about things we can purchase to help with, with the process? Um, well, I think the one thing I would say is that there are a lot of opportunities to pay uh, like a monthly, like you're saying, a monthly subscription fee to have access, for example, to the Adobe Suite. Um, Adobe, the Adobe Suite is pretty amazing because you get a lot of, um, it's a very robust um, platform so you can get access to Photoshop, you can get access to Lightroom, you can get access to a, a whole suite of uh, programs that you can that could be really beneficial to startups. Um, we internally at Lululemon and at home as well, I, I use uh, Adobe Premiere as my editing software. Uh, I, I used to work on Final Cut, uh, which uh, I believe is Mac specific, but Premiere, we migrated over to Premiere. I think it's just um, it's very intuitive. Uh, it's definitely a step up from iMovie. iMovie is a great option if you just want to do some rough and dirty editing um, and don't want to shell out. I think it's like maybe $100 a year or something like that for a subscription or access to the Adobe Suite. Um, but I think, um, you know, before there were YouTube tutorials, I bought a book on how to edit and I would read a line, read a couple lines, I would my mouse and teach myself how to edit and really like there's no easy way around it like you have to put in the time and make mistakes and go shoot your kids playing soccer and make a little edit or shoot a weekend away with your friends and try to put something together and it's a really good way to learn um and there are tutorials on youtube there is a service called lynda.com i don't know if oh you know. yeah lynda.com is amazing That's we need amazing. to we need Heather. <laughs> yeah, and I like Lynda.com. I would say it's like a super professional 
um, site to learn how to use software. So you could learn how to use Lightroom, use Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, like all these amazing suites and um, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, so if you are wanting to take your, your editing and shooting to the next level, it's a great resource for people. Um, but yeah, I would say you have to put in the hard, you have to put in the practice and time. And um, I mean, it, it is a quite an enjoyable process once you get into it. So don't be afraid of it as well. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy once you get rolling. Easy. Maybe it's not easy, but it's fun once you get rolling. It's time on task. We always say to people, it's time on, on task. Is it easy the first time? No. Is it going to be frustrating? Yes. Are you going to think like, I am wasting your my time. What is this? Yes. Take a break and it will get easier. And eventually you'll have the results and it's all going to be worth it. Okay. So say, same with that. Okay. So Adobe Premiere and then lynda.com for um, tutorials and, and practice. And YouTube is the best thing ever for everything from learning how to operate your vacuum cleaner <laughs> to do video. <laughs> love it. Love the tutorials. We do lots of tutorials and keep it simple social media. Here's our plug. <laughs> um, exactly. For people watching the replay, this is a live episode, episode 17. But if you're watching the replay, you can always ask some questions and comments, and we will um, try to answer them or ask Andrea to answer them. If you're watching live, feel free to put little likes if you like some stuff or to comment if you want to ask some questions. Um, we are, oh, something I want to ask. So I came across a photo of, um, on your Instagram account, so it's Andrea uh, underscore wing, or an Instagram account is, is really great. You guys should go follow it and have a look at it. And there's, but there's a photo there of a man, and I have the photo, we'll put it in the comment field. Um, it's a man standing, I guess, on the, on the seawall in Vancouver. I, I, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, you said, maybe you can describe what he looks like and what happened because. That photo, well, I'll, I'll say it. he's on a skateboard with a ton of equipment, but so much equipment. And then I think the caption was kind of hashtag what could possibly go wrong. And you, I was like, this person has like, I don't know how many thousand dollars of equipment and he's balancing and he's about to go on a skateboard. And I remember thinking, this is the reason why you don't take photos in the internet and use them commercially for yourself. And this explains it all. But then I kept thinking, well, did you make it? And what what were they shooting? And so it's a really funny one. And I'm sure it's a great clip. So if you want to tell us a bit about that story, it's really great. And then we'll share it with um, with our viewers. For sure. Uh, so that was a, uh, so we, that's in Vancouver on the sea wall. So this beautiful stretch of, uh, our path, uh, paved pathway along the ocean and we weren't allowed to bring any um car we can't shoot it in the back from the back of a car it was a running video so new run gear we couldn't shoot from the back of the car uh rickshaws are illegal and rollerblades are just a little scary so we decided that we were going to shoot on my friend Mike's skateboard because he's a good skateboarder and um, and it was like it was sort of a bit DIY but um, it's it really worked out and I'll actually I'll send you the link right now so you can have it but it was uh, so that big that big machine that you see or the big overhang is actually a, a camera stabilizer um, and that camera stabilizer, uh, we, we operate with red cameras, which are massive cinema cameras that shoot 6K. So the big camera um, sits on the stabilizer, so you don't see the bounce or the shake. So if we are, if we hit a bump, this stabilizer will just smooth things out, and you won't see any of those bumps. And so anyway, we uh, we survived. He he didn't fall in Vancouver, but he did wipe out in Montreal and uh, cracked the lens and broke the camera oh. slightly. So I wouldn't advise. I wouldn't advise doing it unless you actually know how to skateboard. And That's if you can afford, crazy. I know if you can afford to not be on a skateboard, then stay off the skateboard. 
No, it's because in Montreal, they don't fix the roads. <laughs> exactly it. Yeah, he hit a pothole. <laughs> There's always, the roads are like the worst, and it's a giant construction site, and we're allowed to say that because we're from Montreal <laughs> originally. <laughs> Oh, that is too funny. We will definitely share that clip, and it's it's um yeah, it's a really good one. We're almost done our show. Is there anything you would like to add as a, as a closing note? Um, yeah, I would say like obviously we all know the power of video. Video is a really really great way to communicate um, with your clients or um, guests. I don't know what you would call them, your people your followers um but also think about the medium like do you, you actually need to use video or can you get away with using a still image with uh some type over or some uh, copy over top of it the reason we use video is when we can't explain something through a photo and think about that like is there is is video the only way of conveying your message because it video is an investment in time and resources and oftentimes maybe another medium would work, like a blog post, for example, or 10 photos with some, with some, uh, a little bit of copy, you know? So I would just make sure that you're just not using video for the sake of using video. You actually have a purpose behind it. It's gonna, it's, and you know what, the more compelling your content, the more your, your follow, followers will be engaged. So. Hmm. Excellent closing note. I agree with it all. We are looking forward to be able to share some of your work on our social media channels. If there's anything like, um, you know, like not your your top three or things that some videos you'd like us to share, we'd love to have the link for them. Your website is really great and really, really inspiring. I got totally sucked into it. <laughs> I'm like, this is great. So, um, AndreaWing.com on Instagram, Andrea underscore Wing is how you can find more about her and view her work. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm assuming you're really busy and it really meant a lot to us, thank you, thank you, thank you. No problem. <laughs> so that's it, friends. Hello. <laughs> so this is the end of social chats for today. This episode was uh, shot live in our studio and it will be available on replay on our Facebook business page. I keep it simple social media. We also download it and put it on YouTube. You can YouTube uh, Heather Clifford as a channel or keep it simple social media will direct you there we have a playlist of all the social chats um, with leaders in their industry and they're all chats to help small business owners be inspired and educated and learn tricks from the best in the business our last next show it's going to be um, next week we will announce the um, our guests shortly on our social media channels thank you so much everyone for joining us and if you have any questions for us or for andrea you know where to find us keep it simple social media on facebook on instagram on youtube and and everywhere oh and also if you think that someone would be great on our show someone that you know really stands out and does something good for social media you can um send us suggestions we're always welcome to uh to look at who could could join us for these shows so that's it we will do a blog post with all the key points of this interview and we will embed this video in it on keep a simple social media.com social chats thank you so much and have a great wonderful day <laughs>